Hello everyone, Kanasa here and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. So, in the last episode we started setting up the new space station that we are going to be using to produce all of our bigger interplanetary craft. In this episode we are going to be finishing that off, although at the beginning I was having a very weird issue with the Manta launch system in the fact that everything was overheating and blowing up no matter what I did. Yeah, it was a little bit strange. So the first launch went very, very terribly and we lost part of one on the ascent. I went back to the booster, tried to land that. One of the engines blew up, then I returned to the main craft and then things just kept exploding. I've got no idea what was going on, but it wasn't very good. Then I waited on the launch pad to see what was happening and then the top just exploded randomly. Everything is overheating and I wasn't entirely sure why. So what I did do in order to get this up to orbit successfully is I turned on ignore heating because this is a little bit of a bug. This shouldn't have happened. I've launched these successfully before and after this mission and they don't overheat like they have been for this example. Really not sure what was going on. Heating in this save seems to be a little bit messed up. Obviously, I do usually run with the ignore max temperature cheat on because if I warp faster than I think 10,000 times, there is a small chance that my craft do explode in space for no reason whatsoever. So it's just something that I'm having to live with with this series. Anyway, we were able to get to orbit using that cheat. Unfortunately, I don't really want to be having to use the cheats, but sometimes, well, the Kraken does insist and we were able to safely recover the upper stage in the ocean. Yeah, it was very, very, very hot. Its temperature got to something over 10 million degrees or so. It was, it was ridiculous, but we were able to recover that anyway. And now what we're going to be doing is we are going to be delivering some more material kits and specialized parts to the RSSI, which is the old space station. And what we're going to be doing is building the next two modules or the new space station from here. Although we're only going to be able to launch one at a time with each one of these deliveries because these final two modules that I am going to be building are going to be very large. They are going to be the biggest by far for the space station. So it's just a quick docking procedure and we're all docked. We're gonna transfer all of the supplies across and then what we will do is start working on the next module, which is going to be the ginormous fuel tanks, which are going to hold the vast majority of the liquid hydrogen for the new space station. And I say the vast majority. Well, I've already got a vessel that I have in mind that I am going to be building at the space station, the new one, and it is very big. And even with these ginormous fuel tanks that I will be sending over, well, unfortunately, that's not going to be anywhere near enough fuel to completely fuel it. So I have decided when I make it, what I am going to do is I am going to send up separate refueling missions to that craft once it has been built. And then that way, I don't have to have a stupid amount of fuel tanks at the new space station. Anyway... We delivered our material kits and specialized parts, so what we're going to attempt to do is land the Manta that delivered them. And for the first time, things are looking very promising indeed for a runway landing. This is something that I have never, ever, ever done in KSP. As far as I'm aware, I, I'm fairly sure I haven't done this, is return from orbit and land nice and softly on the KSC runway like we did there. And what I decided to do was, well, we landed on the runway. Let's start a little bit of a collection of craft in front of the space plane hangar of all of the successful attempts at returning from orbit. So that was the first one. Do not worry, we are going to be amassing quite a collection of those during the course of the next two episodes. But anyway, with that being landed successfully, we are going to return to the other Manta that we did launch and basically do the exact same thing. We're going to dock it move over all of the material kits and specialized parts and start working on the big fuel balls, making sure we hack gravity once we get up to the finished state of the craft. Yeah, because hacking gravity is the only way that I can make extra planetary launch pads 
work with Principia. And there we go, we can see we have created the rather large white ball structure of the fuel structure. There was an awful lot of structure in that sentence, but the sentence wasn't particularly well structured. Ah, oh, now isn't that a bit ironic? Anyway, we have made our way over to the new space station, and despite there being a kind of docking module stuck out of the side of this with some solar panels on and, you know, some additional fuel, which actually isn't full at the moment, that is empty, this was rather easy to control. It wasn't difficult, I wasn't having to fight the control at all. It just worked because, to be honest, the vast majority of the mass is in line with the center of that engine. And yeah, the, the bit sticking out the top really wasn't that heavy. But after a bit of a quick docking maneuver, we were able to get this all docked up. And now the station is really taking shape. But in order to build the last section of this, which will be the actual adapter where we will construct the craft well, unfortunately, once again, we have run out of material kits and specialized parts at the old station. Yes, these mantas can deliver, I think, if I recall correctly, about 30,000 per launch. And we need 35,000 material kits for the final piece on its own. So we're going to need to launch another one, unfortunately. But we are able to enter the atmosphere again rather safely. And we overshoot just a tiny bit, but I do have a fair amount of monopropellant left in this vehicle, in this plane, space plane, cargo drone, whatever you want to call it. So we are going to use the remainder of that to try and get ourselves back to the space center, which we are more than capable of doing. And for the second time in this episode, in this series and ever for me, I'm, I'm fairly sure ever for me, we have once again performed a runway landing at the Space Center, and we're going to park this up next to the one that we did land here earlier on. With that being done, though, we are going to be launching some actual modules from the surface of Rode for the new space station. The reason why I want to launch some from Rode rather than creating these at the old space station and then moving them over is because I want to send some supplies and fertilizer up to the new station so that any crew that we send over there, well, they are going to be able to be fed. It would be a bit of a shame if we got them up there and they all starve to death. Would, would it be? No, that, it would definitely be a shame. We want to send up some supplies so that they can eat. And obviously, I cannot produce supplies at the old station. We're going to need to grow them on road and we're going to have to send them up separately. So that's what we're going to be doing with the module that we are launching now. It's going to be supplies and it is also going to act as a new docking adapter for the new station. That way, if I have, well, enough docking adapters spread all over the place, I shan't run into the problem that I did in the last episode where it was a nightmare to find somewhere to dock my craft to. I have designed this with that in mind. This whole station has been designed quite a bit better than the old one because, to be honest, the old one... It was originally just going to be a science station and it was only going to have one small purpose. It was only after a few episodes that I thought, well, we could turn this into a place to build stuff. This station here is purpose built to build stuff. That is what this entire thing is for. But anyway, after a short period of time, we are able to rendezvous to the new space station, dock that up and we have some supplies. So we're going to come back to the exact same launch vehicle. I believe this is a Paladin 1, it's my 50 ton to low road orbit launch vehicle. And this is going to be our nuclear reactor for the space station, for the new one, for TRAP. I think that's what it's going to be called. I can't remember off the top of my head what the acronym was for that. It was Totally Reliable Assembly Platform, I believe, but it was the most liked comment in the last video. And I thought, well, that kind of works. I, I like the acronym for that. and. You know, I can always just, in the middle of a video, shout, IT'S A TRAP! Like Admiral Akbar, the, the the very famous Mon Calamarian. Mon Calamarian? Is that how, is that how would you say that? I'm not sure. From Star Wars, anyway. Made made obviously famous by the, the IT'S A TRAP from Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Great film. Anyway, nuclear reactor. That's what we're sending up. And the reason why I had to make this on road as well is because, once again, I cannot produce the resources that I need for this at the old station. We need enriched uranium for this to run. 
we can only make that on road. I can eventually, at a future point, probably make that in situ, but as it stands, I do not have the technology to do that kind of thing at the moment. So we're just going to launch it from road and everything will be good. And what we'll do is we will launch yet another couple of Mantas. Yes, these are really expensive to launch. I think someone pointed out that they're about a million and a half funds each time I launch these, which is, to be honest, quite a ludicrous amount of funding. And someone also did point out the fact that I did say I wanted to keep these relatively realistic in this series. When I said that at the beginning of the series, I was more meaning I'm not going to be creating things like antimatter. I'm not going to be sending up huge tanks of antimatter and all of that really expensive stuff because that would run into the several tens of millions of funds for a single mission and i'm not going to do that i do want to use antimatter but when i create craft that are capable of using that i want to mine and harvest that and produce it off world so i'm not spending a ludicrous amount of money on that really expensive stuff that is something that i can do but that is going to be something way, way, way further down in the tech tree. But then, to be fair, any craft that I build that uses antimatter as fuel is also going to be way further down in the tech tree as well. It's, it's a long way off. That is end game content. And I'm very much looking forward to that because it means I should be able to make torch ships at a later date. Anyway, we tried to land the upper stage booster yet again. This time, unlike last time, it was unsuccessful. So... There were a few suggestions in order to fix this. I haven't done it in this episode because that is the last time that we will be launching a Manta in this episode. But I've gone in and I've added some parachutes. I know it's it's I'm not it's not the way that I wanted to go about doing this. I wanted to propulsively land this, glide it in. Because to be honest, when you do stuff like this, parachutes just feel a bit like a cop out. It's it's not the best way of doing it. But I have gone in and I've added some and they will be used in later iterations of this vehicle. And that way I can successfully land it because that thing is just really too heavy for the wings. It's just balls like a brick straight out of the sky. And that's not good for anyone. But anyway, we have docked another Manta to the RSSI. And this will be the last Manta that we docked to this station. We obviously sent two up, but we only needed one to fill out basically fill out our material kits to build the last piece of the space station. The next Manta that we will be sending over, which is going to be left in road orbit, well, that'll be going to the new space station so that we can start building our first interplanetary ship. But that won't come until the next episode. Anyway, we have now built up the final piece of the puzzle. This is the workshop module, and it also contains material kits, well, space for material kits and specialized parts. Now, this thing was a friggin' nightmare to move around. Because of that truss section, well, the center of mass is wildly, wildly off the center of thrust. And it meant that I had to burn incredibly slowly to get this to where I wanted to go. Otherwise, the thing would just spiral out of control. And obviously, if I want to go somewhere kind of decent well spiraling out of control is really bad so i turned the thrust limiter all the way down and this burn i think ended up taking about four minutes or so or thereabouts it, it was a lot longer than it should have taken we can see we're 25 kilometers away from the new station now and i'm already starting my burn it's longer than four minutes i can see the burn is now estimating four minutes and we've already burnt quite a lot of the way to get here and obviously, as we are getting rid of fuel in that stage, in the transfer stage, it becomes more and more difficult to control because the center of mass is shifting around the spacecraft. But with a lot of patience, we were able to get this within sight of the new space station and we were able to slow down to a complete stop. And it was only the engine that had this problem when i used the rcs on this craft to dock to the space station well things went rather smoothly they didn't go all over the place and docking for once was way easier than performing a rendezvous which is something that never ever ever happens to me i usually really hate docking but this time no it was absolutely fine here we can see we are just coming in nice and slowly now and any minute we will be docked to the space station. And it shall be complete. And there we go. 
And that'll be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Until the next one, I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.